By the end of this lecture, you will be able to solve any type of inverting and non-inverting op amp configurations. So be patient and stay until the end. All right, we have uh, an output node here. We have two inputs. This is called the non-inverting input and this is the inverting input. Just a name, not really something important. And uh, there is a gain here of A0. There are two rules we have to follow. Number one, no uh, actual current flows through the inputs. And number two, this little equation is uh, true for all uh, op-amps. However, this uh, little configuration as is, is not really useful. So what we do is we most of the times create a negative feedback loop. I want you to pay attention on this equation. This result, the output, we want it to be finite. We want to have an actual output which is useful. The uh, gain must be very large, almost infinity, for an ideal op -up at least. That would mean that this uh, little difference must be very small very close to zero. So the inverting input and the non-inverting input must be very close to each other. The difference must be very close to zero. V plus must be equal to V minus. Again, this is true only when we have a negative feedback loop. And it's true most of the times. Not always, but 99% of the time. All right, moving forward, let's uh, examine the inversing op -amp. Again, we have the little rules here, so, so we remember them. There is a current flowing from here to here, no current flows from here to here, and the current flows from here all the way to here. I'll name this node X. This will be the voltage at point X. And how much would that voltage be? Again, have to follow this rule. The voltage at, po at node X must be equal to the voltage here, which is zero because this is the ground. We call this point a virtual ground because it always has a voltage of zero. This is not actually grounded. When you have a more complex configuration over here, you might be tempted to say that this is parallel to some resistors that are pointing to the ground. This is not true. This point is not actually grounded. It just means that the voltage here is zero. What we are going to do is we're taking the Ohm's law. Like first, for R1, the voltage here must be V in minus Vx over I, the common current, and the voltage here must be equal to Vx minus V out over I. We know that Vx is zero, the future grounds. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that this is the same current. Therefore, V in over R1 must be equal to minus V out over R2, which brings us to this little beautiful equation. This says to us that the output over the input is determined by the negative sign of R2 over R1. This negative sign here is the reason we call this an inversing op-amp. Now, if we had a, an impedance here in general, Z1, and an impedance here, Z2, instead of resistors, again, we would follow the same principles and we would get this result, minus Z2 over Z1. All right, so let's look at this exercise. We have some capacitors, a couple of resistors, and we are asked to find what is the transfer function um, in the frequency domain. All right, before we panic, let's notice some things here. I see that this node is ex actually the same as this node, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this circuit like this. This is the exact same. Take your time and look at it. This uh, 
this node is exact same as this node, so I just write it like this. Now, I am familiar with this configuration. This is what? This is Z1 and this is Z2 from our previous uh, analysis. Therefore, I figure out that this is a typical inverting op-amp. Z1 must be equal to C1 in parallel to R1, and the same with Z2. So, I know that V out over V in must be equal to minus Z2 over Z1, which would mean I will just uh, write the analytical equations here. What is the Z of R1 and R2? The same value of the ohmic resistance, R1 and R2, and the impedance of the capacitors must be equal to 1 over Cs, again for the different capacitors. Now, if I do the algebra here, I get this little beautiful result. I have a little quiz for you here. What did we build with this configuration? What is actually this? I leave it up to you and I expect an answer in the comments below. Moving on now to the non-inverting op-amp, we have a little bit of different configuration. Again, notice that we have a negative feedback. And uh, what we have now is two resistors connected like this. Again, we have the same rules. Now, we have a current flowing from here to here. Can it flow like this? No. Again, we cannot violate this rule. But it can, I can flow from here all the way to the ground. I will call this node node x, and I'm going to say that vx is equal to v in. I notice that the current is common all the way to here. So what I have here is actually a voltage divider from uh, circuit theory, if you remember. The voltage here to here which is V out minus zero over the total resistance, which is R1 plus R2, must be equal to the voltage from here to here, which is V in minus zero over the total resistance from here to here, which is R2. Now, if we shuffle things around, we get V out over V in is equal to R1 plus R2 over R2. And if I uh, separate these two fractions, I get R1 plus R1 plus R2. The sign here is plus, so that's why this is called the non-inverting open. All right. Again, we can generalize this in case we had an impedance here and here. Z1 as Z2. Now, let's look at this exercise. We have our basic rules here. We have a common current here. It splits into I1 and I2. Obviously, it does not go over here, right? We cannot violate this rule. And we will call this point, point X. The voltage here must be Vx, so that would be equal to V in. This is point A, which has a voltage of Va. And what we are going to do is we are going to do a KCL on point A. I is equal to I1 plus I2. This is equation 0. We are going to apply Ohm's law. First here, R1 must be equal to V out minus Va over I. R2 must be equal to VA minus 0, right? VA minus 0 over I2. R3 must be equal to VA minus V in over I1. And therefore, must be equal to V in minus 0 over I1. Again, I notice I1 is the same here. I divide these two equations and I get this result. 
between the A and the in, we have this little equation here. Now, I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to apply 1, 2, and 4. So, I get this result. I notice that VA is this times V in. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the VA here and I get this result. Shuffling things around, I get V out over V in this equation here. And that's it. That's the output over the input. Again, by doing a simple Ohm's laws and KCLs or KVLs. What if uh, R4 was very large? If R4 is very large, this would mean that this term would be zero, and also this term would be zero. We would be left with this little part here, which would be R1 over R2 plus 1. The exact same of the actual non-inversing op-amp the basic simple configuration. Similarly, if we said that R2 is very large, so this would be an open circuit here, we could have R1 and R3 in series, and we have an R4 connected between here and the ground. You can uh, do this as an exercise, and you can figure it out. Now I have a little quiz for you. What would happen it will have the resistance here and also here. Would our results actually change? I'll leave it up to you. Write me in the comments below. If you have been paying attention, this will be very easy for you. If you find these videos valuable, kindly check what I've prepared for you in the description below. You're going to love this. If you study electronics one, you're going to pass your exams very easy. I'll see you in the next one. Study well and take care.